Okay. So, um, I I know this is Joy's class, okay? Joy's class, Joy's the instructor. But for the first three weeks, I'm going to do some lectures, okay? And this is be partly because I have some um, ideas, not my ideas, other people's ideas, but I have some ideas that I want to share with you, okay, that are very important to me, okay, these ideas are very important to me, and I want to share these ideas with you. Um, and these are largely connected to language, okay, and how we learn language, because for you to be a teacher, okay, in maybe an English class, classroom English, is that I think it's important for you to have an understanding of, of how we learn language and how we really, we have um, science and research, we have learned so much just in the last 10 years about learning languages and how we learn languages, okay? So I'm, in the next three weeks, I'm going to talk to you a bit. Um, it's selfish, uh, but I have some things I want to share with you. It's really important to me, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, I apologize if I'm really boring. Um, so, we will start with classroom English. Uh, this class, what is classroom English? Okay? And I want you to think about uh, Korean teachers. Okay? Let's think about maybe classroom Korean. Okay? Let's think about uh, in three weeks, you will all go to. Um, uh, elementary school to do your teaching practice, okay? And I want you to, I really, this is very important time for you, okay? I want you to, um, you know, participate a lot in those classrooms and watch the teachers. For example, Korean teacher teaching Korean class, okay? <coughs> Korean teacher teaching Korean class. Does a Korean teacher make a lesson plan? Sure, I think so, probably. Usually, or at least they'll maybe have other lesson plans already created for them. Okay, a Korean teacher teaching Korean class. Does the Korean teacher prepare all of their Korean words before class? No. Okay, but for you, if you were to be teaching an English class, many of you think you must prepare your English words before class. Okay, I think that's a bad idea. Okay. Why? why? Why might preparing English words or Korean words before class, why might that be a bad idea? Any ideas why? No ideas? Do you know what your students will say in class? Do you know what your students will do in class? Not exactly. There are many things that we cannot predict. There are many things that we cannot anticipate. So you cannot prepare your Korean for a Korean class. Also, you cannot prepare your English for an English class because you do not know what children will say. You don't know what children will do. You have to just use your English ability, in my opinion. Okay, that's kind of my opinion and other, other people's opinion. Okay. So, Commonly, okay, classroom English is authentic English used in an EFL, ESL classroom for authentic communication. Any questions? Any questions? No questions? You understand everything? Okay, all right. Uh, authentic English means English, or authentic English in this context refers to any English or English materials not, not specifically created for teaching English. So if I bring a um, English textbook to my English class, is that authentic material? No, because an English textbook is created for teaching English. Now, if I bring an English um, world history book to class, is that authentic material? 
Yes, that is authentic. Because it's an English history book, world history book, but it was not created for teaching English. It was created for teaching history. Okay, so authentic materials are when we use English or we use English materials that are not for teaching English. For example, right now, I'm speaking to you in English. Is it authentic right now? Yes. I'm trying to teach you about classroom English. I'm not trying to teach you English right now. If I was trying to teach you English, that would not be authentic. Excellent question. How Everyone understands EFL, ESL? Oh, then why don't you ask a question? Uh, EFL, ESL? Oh, let me tell you. Okay, so uh, EFL is English as a foreign language. Okay? All of you are learning English, but you live in Korea. That means English as a foreign language. Okay? If you are live if you are Korean but you are living in Canada or living in Australia or living in English and you are studying English, that would be English as a second language because you are living in an English country, but English is not your native language, okay? Now, classroom English, this is, this is the theory, okay, the eagle, okay, of what, of what classroom English should be, okay, is that it's authentic materials. But usually, how it's used, in, especially in Korea, okay, generally speaking, in Korea, classroom English is not this. Usually it's not. Generally speaking, classroom English exhibits itself as an extensive set of English phrases, English phrases, 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 okay, used in an EFL, ESL classroom to present lessons and lead a class in English. Okay? So what usually happens in classroom English is that a teacher will learn or memorize many phrases to use in class. Please, take out your pencil. Please, clear your desk. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Does anyone have a question? And we learn these phrases to use in class. We learn, memorize these set phrases, okay? Now, we could do a class like this, where I, where I try to teach you phrases, okay? But it's really boring, okay? For me, at least, very boring. Maybe interesting for you. If, if you need to learn phrases, okay. I will put some links on course sites, okay? So you can go and you can learn many classroom English phrases if you want to. Plus, the only way you can learn phrases anyway is for you to study it yourself. So if you want to do that. Um, so what I want you now on your worksheet here, okay? I want you to think about what is classroom English, and I want you to think about this, your understanding of what classroom English should be. What do you think classroom English should be? Okay, your thinking, your idea. Okay. So let's go ahead and stop now. You all have your sentences written. Hopefully you share with your partners. You're able to come up with some good ideas. All right. Um, so in this classroom here, who who can speak Korean well? Everybody? You can all speak Korean well? OK, I think so. Probably all of you could speak Korean well before elementary school, OK? Before you entered elementary school, all of you could speak Korean probably very well, okay? Research shows that children, this is uh, American children, English-speaking English children, by the age of five, so the American age five, Korean age six, by age five, children, English-speaking children, can, can use and create complex sentences, okay? And have a and complex sen sentences include passive, passive voice sentences and conditional sentences. If you guys know conditionals like hamyun, okay, is like a con 
initial. Um, but anyway, children also have a vocabulary of about five to 7,000 words by the age of five. So children have a large vocabulary and understand and can use most grammar structures, okay, before they enter elementary school. Did your parents, did your parents teach you grammar? But you learned grammar. In fact, research shows that about between 12 to 18 months, children begin to exhibit forms of grammar, okay, in their sentences, in the way they use words. So children are able to learn grammar, learn many words, learn a very complex language, like Korean or like English, before they go to school. So before children go to school, they learn, you all learned Korean before you went to elementary school. But then you go to elementary school and you study English for many years. So your English must be very good. Maybe not, okay? So, so let's think about this, is that why is it, why is it that children can learn to speak their native language very well without school? But with school, we have a very difficult time learning a second language or learning a foreign language, okay? So let, let's think about children, okay? Elementary age children. So elementary age to children, what kind of animal comes to mind when you think of an elementary age child? Anyone? What kind of animal do you think of when you think, if we look out the window and we see elementary, elementary children, what kind of animal comes to mind? Puppy, okay, what, what? Rabbit? Monkey? <laughs> Chimpanzee? <laughs> okay, any other idea? What I'd like you to do on your sheet is I'd like you to please write down an animal that you think of when you think about elementary age children. Write down one or two animals. Okay, so yeah, so now what I want you to, I want you to think about children, okay, elementary age children, and what kind of traits or characteristics do elementary age children have? What are some traits or characteristics of elementary age children? They're small, okay, many of them are small, some of them are as big as David, actually. Uh, yeah, okay, many of them are cute. Uh, any other characteristics or traits? Okay, imaginative, I like that, excellent. So that's a good trait or a characteristic. Many of them are imaginative. In fact, on measurements of imagination or, or um, uh, what was that word? Uh, divergent thinking, uh, yeah, children actually measure much higher than adults uh, on measures of creativity. Good, anything else? Active. Children are very active or energetic. Energetic, energetic. That's another good, tr I agree. Anything else? Talkative. Oh my gosh, yeah. They're really talkative, they're always talking, yeah? Except in class, well, even in class sometimes too, right? Very talkative, very curious. Anything else? Yeah, just in your own words. Don't worry about it. They like to touch things. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, Joy even pointed out adults. We like to touch things too, right? We like the feelings of touching things. Yeah, I agree. Children love to touch things. Now, I think that that's certainly a trait and a characteristic of children. I want you to be writing these down, right? Because remember, I'm grading your completeness, so hopefully you are writing many things down in class. Anything else? Say again. They often make adults angry, yeah, they can be very um, subversive, uh, what's a, um, annoying, uh, disobedient often. Anything else? Any other ideas? 
I think children can be aggressive at times, particularly if, if um, their homes are aggressive home environments as well. But yeah, certainly children can be very aggressive. So let's, let's think about this, okay? We have children, okay? These traits, you just thought about the traits, the characteristics of these children, okay? And we have children, and these children, they learn language at home or before school, okay? Children learn their first language before going to school. So we have the traits of the children, and they learn Korean before they start school, and how? How did they learn Korean? How did you learn Korean before school? To who? A lot of it to your parents, maybe grandparents or grand or friends or what? Television, yes. Television, television as well, yes. Uh, we go back in history, certainly be before television, we still learn language, but yeah, music, we learn, learn by listening to music. So, so, uh, so these children, given their traits, and living at home or in their neighborhoods or in their communities, learn Korean before they go to school. And a lot of their language comes from parents, although, uh, as it was pointed out to me by Joy, is decreasingly by parents, more and more, Children learn a lot of language in the other right? Because <laughs> uh, they spend a lot of time there these days. So let's think about parents and or caretakers. And I'm going to throw, I'm going to, just my own decision, I'm going to throw like the other Egypt teachers um, into that caretaker group. Um, um, although that may not be, that may not be appropriate, I don't know. Uh, but why do you think parents, or especially mothers, so, uh, and caretakers, caretakers, grandparents, grandfather, grandmother, uh, uncles, aunts, maybe whoever's taking care of you, are so successful in helping children acquire language. And think about children, the characteristics of children. Why are they, why are parents and caretakers, why are they so successful in helping children learn and acquire language? I want you to think about your ideas. Quickly write down a list of reasons in the appropriate box. Then share your list with your partner, with your other group member. And then with your group, with your partner, write out one sentence explaining why parents and caretakers are so good in helping children acquire language. You have five minutes. And I'm going, many of my, and again, I think most of you are all very correct. Okay, with the things that you write. I found that my students are, are usually correct with many of their ideas for why parents are so helpful, and why parents are so successful. But also many students, they focus on the reasons why they, they explain it and it's very rational, okay? It's very, they give very good, rational, logical reasons for why parents are helpful in, in helping their children acquire language. But I think there is also something very important that we often miss. Something very important that especially we miss in school, that we miss in education. And I'm going to just give a, a quick example. Uh, all of you know that Joy has a daughter. Yeah? You guys all know Joy has a daughter? Daughter? No? Yeah, she has a daughter. Her daughter lives here in Jeju. Okay. How old is she? That's an excellent question. Why don't you ask her that? She's eight years old, Korean age, eight years old. Korean age, eight years old. Her daughter speaks English, but her daughter also speaks Korean, really, really, I mean, fluently, basically, right? Mm, totally, her daughter speaks yeah. fluent English, fluent Korean, amazing, right? I mean, yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> I wish I could speak English as well as her. Um, so bad laughing. <laughs> All right. Um, what was I going to say next? Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, Joy, your daughter. Your daughter speaks excellent English. Your daughter speaks uh, excellent Korean. Um, do you love your daughter? Yes. 
Yes. Do you love your daughter with all your heart and all of your soul? Yes. Of course. Okay. Do you want the best for your daughter? You do you want the best for her future? Yes. I Absolutely, do. she does. Will you do anything to help your daughter achieve her dreams? Of course. Of course she will. And my point here is that this is something that is very, very important to actually helping a child learn a language or learn anything. We're talking about an emotional connection between the mother or father and the child, or the grandmother or the grandfather. And we, we ignore this in education. We never talk about how important the relationship, the emotional bond and connection is between an older or more knowledgeable other and the child, and how important this is for helping children learn a language or learn anything, actually. And we'll talk about a little bit next week. I'll try to show you, I'll try to prove to you why this is so important. More important than any pedagogy or any methodology that you will learn in school, okay? Because it doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of grades you get in this university. That will not determine how good of a teacher you will be in the future. What, what will likely, most, most likely determine how good of a teacher you will be is how, right now, do you want to help your children grow and succeed in their lives? Do you want to make a real real strong emotional uh, emotional connection with your children? Yeah. Okay, I'm happy to hear that. I think that that's really important to hear that. Okay, because that will likely determine how successful you will be as a teacher. Okay? And so, something to think about. We'll, we'll look at that next week uh, a little bit. Now, last part, then we're finished. Learning a native language versus a foreign language. How is learning a foreign language different from learning a native language? Okay, and actually we're running behind, so I'm we're, I'm gonna we're gonna skip over you writing down your thoughts. Okay, and I'm just gonna give you some ideas. But I want you to think about the physical differences. Okay, between learning a native language versus learning a foreign language, and, and really there are not really many physical differences, okay? Almost zero. There are some physical differences in the ways that when you learn a, a first language, the neuronal connections, the synapse, synaptic connections, synapses in your brain are very strong for the first language, which then prevents or inhibits your ability to learn the second language because those synapses are so strong. Okay, that's really about the only physical difference there is in learning a first language versus a second language. Okay, although people like to think there are many more physical differences, there really aren't. Think about psychological differences and especially environmental differences. Okay, and I want you to make a list, but we don't have time for that. So I'm just going to skip to doctors uh, Freeman and Freeman, um, their hus husband and wife. And they wrote uh, a really uh, interesting article that was published in the book, uh, English Learners Reaching the Highest Level of English Literacy. Okay? And they identified that in L1 acquisition, everyone understands L1? First language? Good. First language acquisition versus L2. For all of you, L2 is Korean. Okay? <coughs> For learning your second language, is that when we learn our first language, it is subconscious. You never thought about, ooh, the, the baby never thinks, ooh, should I use past tense or should I use future tense right now? <laughs> Babies don't think like that, okay? But they learn past tense, they learn future tense, but parents never teach past tense or future tense. Okay? Whereas for learning your second language, usually it's always conscious. Okay? For learning your first language, most of it occurs in informal situations. 
at home, going shopping, going to the park, playing with friends. Whereas learning your second language usually occurs in formal situations, in a classroom. Okay? And, and if you ask any Korean who speaks English really well, ask them, when, when did your English become really good? They will always say, when I went to Australia, or when I went to Canada, or when I went to England, or when I went to America. And the reason why is because you need these, these informal situations to be using it in an informal environment. And you need to, it results from trying to communicate, real communication, not just results from direct teaching. Damon teaching you how to speak English. You will never learn English. You will never acquire the language. Okay? Another is that it involves learning to use language for real purposes. This is very important. Is that you're not, you're not using English to learn English, but that you're using English because you want to do something. You want to achieve something. It's a, we have to use language intentionally. Whereas, learning your second language it involves learning predetermined and prescribed language. Okay? The teacher decides what you should learn. And again, I want you to think back to when we had our reading, our book reading last semester, right? I never told you how to tell a story. But all of you became very good at telling stories. If I taught you how to tell a story, your storytelling ability would be very low. But I didn't teach you how to do it. You wanted, you read a book that you love, you want to share with other people, and your storytelling ability in English became very good. Okay? And again, this predetermined prescribed language is garbage anyways, right? Good morning, class. How are you today? Hi, thank you, and you. Okay, nobody talks like that, really, in English. Okay? The teacher decided that that's what you should learn, or the educational system did. Okay? First language can be used. Second language can be tested. In fact, the tests are often driving how we teach the language. Okay? So this is why you know David hates testing. Okay. So I hope that you wrote all of this down.